faster now and my heart beats slow I thought I might just let you Baby, we are we are so fortunate tonight to have in house Micah Nelson, aka Particle Kid. Micah, aloha, welcome home, brother. Thank you, Vince. Amazing. So nice to see you here. Yeah, good to be back on the island. Yeah, man. Yeah, can... All right, everyone. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Katie Zuber. I'm the co-host tonight for our 19th speaker and music series with HFUU. I'm also in charge of membership and communications for Hawaii Farmers Union. Um, so these events are very special for me because it's such a great way for members to come together. As COVID restrictions ease, though, I am looking forward to having more in-person meetings. Each chapter will start to have more in-person meetings as well as uh, possibly most likely our convention in November, our statewide convention. So please stay on the lookout for any emails about local HFUU meetings um, and our convention as well as some mini conventions. Also make sure that you're getting these emails. Please let me know if you're not receiving an email, you should get one every single week in your inbox. There's a lot of good info in it. And please also make sure you're following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Katie, so talk about our website. What's archived on our website? And, you know, we have a lot of things, all these speaker series, right? Yeah, that's true. All the speaker series are on the website as well as our YouTube channel. You should also be subscribed to us on YouTube. Um, there's a lot of hfuu.org. There's a ton of information on there. All of your benefits are listed, um, as well as past events, info about each chapter, the board of your local chapter. So, definitely browse through our website and email me if you have any questions. My email is hfuu at hfuu.org. So cool. tonight we have here with us tropical fruit expert, Ken Love. He is the executive director of the Hawaii Tropical Fruit Growers and has one of the most insanely impressive resumes I have ever seen. So I'm it's just insane, leave it insane. I, I couldn't, took yeah, it's incredible. I couldn't believe it breaking records. I'm really excited to see what he's got to say tonight. We also have here with us the amazingly talented Micah Nelson, aka Particle Kid, uh, whose tunes you just heard and we'll hear more of very shortly. Both Micah and Ken, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. It is truly an honor to have you both here. We're very grateful. So if you have any questions for either individual, please post it in the chat feature. Please post to everyone. If you have any specific issues, you can uh, chat to just me, the host of the call. We'll also have a Q&A portion with Ken uh, at the end. So there's there will definitely be opportunities to ask questions specifically to Ken about fruit and their conversation tonight. Other than that, we are the Hawaii Farmers Union United. I'm going to kick it back off to our president, Vincent Mina, uh, who will start off the evening. Well, Katie, you know what I got today? I got in the mail. My very Yay! Own. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so we finally got membership cards, folks. Hey, me too. Card carrying member. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, good. Good. Hey, Vince, me too. 
Oh, We're going good, back man. to physical cards. Right. Uh, no more digital. That's mine yesterday, so. too. <laughs> All right. Cool. Love it. Love it. Oh, that is such good news. Um, yeah. Delicious. So if you don't get your physical mem membership card in the next couple weeks, because I haven't gotten mine here in HANA yet, please let me know. Uh, we'll make sure to get you that because that's how you get all your benefits and that's how you brag to your friends that you are a member of the Hawaii Farmers Union. Did you get mail in HANA now? <laughs> Sorry, never mind. You get mail in HANA. <laughs> well, wise guy. So, you know, uh, the, um, thank you, Katie. And, and, you know, we're so fortunate, everybody, to have Katie as our membership chair. Katie, you know, we just, every, I'm so impressed by how on purpose she is with all the work that she does. And she takes it very much to heart and makes sure and she really cares about our members. And that that's a beautiful thing. And thank you so much, Katie, in, in that spirit. Cause that's that's what this is all about. You know, we're, we're an organization that values the life of the land. Well, we wanna value the life of people being well and, and, and the way you treat yourself and comport yourself in this organization really you know, brings that forward. So thank you so much. And you were going to see Ollie tonight. How old's Ollie now? He's six months old. Yeah, he'll be here for the okay, for the music good. at the end for good. sure. He's he our youngest it. member. And <laughs> um, uh, so so yeah, here we are. You know, um, just a little bit about Hawaii Farmers Union United before I go off on this uh, rocket launch with Ken Love, because uh, you know, sp fasten your seatbelts, folks. There's chock full of information that. Ken will share tonight with us, and oh, it's all good, Michael. No, I'm and, just scared of the debris that will fly. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of flying. No, actually, we, we are friends, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, Hawaii Farmers Union United. Uh, we're a um, uh, charter chapter of the National Farmers Union, and what that means basically is that when I go to uh, back east four times a year. Uh, we go to different places on the mainland and we have we have board meetings. I get to uh, vote at the table for Hawaii, representing Hawaii. And that charter happened back in 2017. Uh, it was the first time in 11 years a state organization has been chartered with national. So it's a very uh, auspicious uh, designation that we have. And uh, recently I was voted on to the executive committee. There is a summer board meeting happening in Minnesota at the end of this month, but I chose out. Uh, uh, physically, I'm going to just do it virtually. I don't have to deal with all the rigmarole and traveling right now. But, um, you know, the, the, the organization has been very supportive and very excited about Hawaii and its growth and what we stand for. And we're a, definitely a regenerative voice at the table, uh, the National Farmers Union. Uh, we're bringing a lot around uh, soil health. And in that spirit, uh, right now, because I'm on the State Board of Agriculture, it's given me the platform to bring uh, all the agricultural sectors to the table. We've had three meetings so far with our Soil Health Initiative and really excited about what this represents in having all the agricultural sector discussing the value and supporting the value of what soil health represents, not only in erosion control and mitigating climate change with being able to have humic uh, substances in the soil for carbon to attach to, but also the fact that our food, you know, we that we that we have nutrient rich food and food that isn't denatured. So in that spirit, you know, this is this is what uh, HFUU values and we're all about. And uh, because one day and it's coming, you know, there's going to be a a scanning device and that scanning device is going to be able to test nutrient density in food. So when Ken's growing his his tropical fruits organically and giving it all the great uh, fertilization that it needs uh, uh, and, and growing that microflora in the soil to be able to have that fruit be nutrient rich. And then I'm growing it, mining the soil and sucking everything out of it that I can possibly suck out of it to get as much production as I can. And we put our fruits together. Well, Ken's, Ken's going to give him more money because all that nutrient density is going to be in his food where my fruit isn't going to have it and I'll get less. So I Just feel means that I didn't make it back to the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this is a, this is a situation where I really want our farmers to be honored for what they do and the, and the amount of time and energy they put into, you know, the life of the land and practicing these practices uh, around soil health. And, and it's, it's, it's time has come folks with this pandemic and everything, people are recognizing that uh, we need to have food that keeps us well. 
uh, because I don't know if you've been listening to the news lately, but this past year, I have not heard one time in the news that they've ever talked about the importance of having a strong immune system. So take that for what it is. Uh, we're going to change all that in the spirit of getting more and more people uh, understanding that that's who we are. And there's a lot of people out there who who value all that, too. So, you know, Vince, oh, yeah, sorry, Ken, before, yeah. before before we, you know, before um, the Zoom opened, you and I were talking a little bit about Australia and Peter and all that. One of the other reasons uh, for you to go to Australia is to look at some of the studies there that that fit into what you just said, that we have to eat uh, three times more food now than we did in 1960 wow. to get the same nutritional value. There you go. And, and so this, that was an Australian study from uh, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at, you know, I have celiac disease. If you look at the rise of celiac and the other autoimmune uh, diseases since the wheats were modified in the 60s and the places that were early adopters of the modified uh, wheats that, right. that Borlaug won the Nobel Prize for that fed the world, you know. Yeah, right. Um, the places that adopted them have the highest levels of celiac and autoimmune. This was the University of Chicago study. You know, across the street in France, you know, Italy is number one for celiac and uh -huh. most of these places. But across the street in France, we don't need that American sheet. You know, so they have almost no celiac compared to the rest of, uh, of Western culture. And, and thank you for sharing that, Ken, because of all the Roundup, too, that's been used to to ripen right to, to yeah yeah ripen. i mean that's well that comes later but yeah i mean it's it's yep. definitely all part all part, part of it i mean pe people people yep. say you're organic i mean and i go you mean there's something else <laughs> you know i mean yeah. it's, it's a <laughs> uh, it's gotta be a um I, I i mean i can't see why people wouldn't be that's because right. yeah it's more work and i got more weeds and i got more headaches but i got more health you know except yeah, my, my problems are all mechanical, you know, in terms of uh, pulling <laughs> you gotta, out. Muscles. You got to stop punching walls, being frustrated about all the. Nah, it's, you should have seen the other guy, man. It's so, <laughs> <laughs> so, Ken, you know, we're real fortunate, of course, to have you here tonight. I, you know, we, you and I have been working uh, in our own uh, worlds and yet at the same time, the same world uh, yep. over the years and uh, really respect and appreciate all the body of work you put in. You know, we were talking earlier about your containment greenhouse you put in on your land there. Could you share with folks what that is and what it represents for tropical? Well, this, this has, um, this has uh, eight, eight chambers, eight rooms inside of the 30 by 30 foot greenhouse that uh, because it's containment, which is a step above quarantine, it allows us to write controlled import permits to uh, be able to bring in uh, citrus and mangoes and things that aren't normally allowed through the USDA permitting process without uh, a staff entomologist and um, USDA on staff. Well, I got you, our USDA people to buy off on it and they're willing to serve in that function in order for the growers here to be able to look at in two, three years after, after the quarantine period to look at new varieties of citrus. There are citrus in, you know, 40 years in Japan. There is citrus in Japan that's just so amazing and so sweet. It just blows away even our sweetest tangelos here. Wow. So these are, are, are things that, uh, you know, re represent one possible future for Hawaiian growers. There's, there's the other possible future is really the um, the things that don't have to be in quarantine that are basically unheard of, like ma praying, tampoy, uh, even more common things like a cha cha, uh, you know, and um, meringue. So these these things have great economic potential for farmers. And if I, if I was you know twenty five or Micah's age, which is like, what, 23? So, oh, thanks. <laughs> 31. There you go. So if, I, if, I, if I was younger than me and Vince, <laughs> you know, which includes everybody, um, the, the, I would plant you know, 10 acres of a cha-cha, 10 acres of ma-prang. Ma-prang, is like a mango plum. It's mm -hmm. an orange 
mango flavored plum. Wow. And it's just, uh, it, so we just ordered 500, uh, 500 trees from uh, Vietnam, thanks to Lou Whitney's friend who he introduced me to. I noticed Lou from Javi is. Yeah, is Lou's on tonight. Too. Yeah, right yeah. on. And, and Lou's buddy Doan got, got me hooked on this. And, and Lance, our guy in Oahu, is getting another 500 trees from, um, from uh, uh, Thailand. So we'll have about six to eight different varieties of Ma Prang. So they come in bare rooted? How do they come in? Well, they can come in in a, an approved soilless media, okay. not cocoa core, but there are some um, you know types of peat moss in that are produced there uh, in Southeast Asia, or actually some are produced in Malaysia, some are produced in Germany and shipped there. And we got to use that instead of our own stuff because our own stuff's not approved. But uh, it can come in bare root, it can come in newspaper, shredded paper, it doesn't, uh, I've uh, brought both types in from the Philippines before of things. And so-, so you, have, you have some of that uh, growing in, in Kona? Not well. There's some, but these were just early samples or things that we found that already existed here. But we're talking about quantities, and part of the reason for that is that um, if I buy a grafted fruit, grafted durian, let's say, which is obviously extremely popular uh, on Oahu, it's three hundred dollars. If I buy it in Hilo, it's about one hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. um, if I buy it in the Philippines, it's seventy-five cents. If I buy it in Malaysia, it's three dollars. Unreal. So, you know, you, you look at what we have to pay, what you have to pay for at Lowe's on Maui for a grafted uh, avocado or citrus as 65 to 85 dollars. Right. Right? right. So I have to pay the same here if I go to Lowe's or Home Depot or some of the nurseries, even the sale days at Planet Hawaii, it's 45 dollars. What do you think like a five foot grafted citrus tree in Japan costs in that market? No idea. Hey, you don't want to guess? Go ahead. All right, uh, seven dollars and fifty cents. Wow. wow. So the priority is on agriculture, on helping the farmer to That's establish right. local crops. That's right. Their priorities are different. Uh, the article came out that I posted on um, the Hawaii Tropical Fruit Growers Facebook page today about the greenhouses on Lanai and what. Uh, Larry Ellison's yeah. doing with that in Sensei Ag, and it's a it's a fascinating story. And they're they're looking into fruit trees, and you need to get Paul De Felipe to do one of these meetings with the Sensei Ag guys. It's just it's just amazing. Now. Sounds good. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. And but, Ken, so so what's going on with with uh, you know the whole idea of tropical fruits here in Hawaii? You know, certain things will grow in certain areas. I know a lot of folks that are on the call, you know, would like to put in trees on their property what would you recommend i mean you know the, the well whole... first of all look at what your neighbors have i mean i get a lot of people yeah. i want to grow kiwi in hawaii don't waste your time oh we can do it i know we can do it i want to grow olives well maybe upper elevation kula you can grow olives or right. if you're on in in waimea in the middle of the big island but you're not growing them at sea level in kihei or, right. or kona so uh, look at what your neighbors have Right. I mean, you got to get answer. an idea of, of that, uh, the, the culture in that particular area. So so what about these monument trees, all these fruit trees that you see there now? There's big monument trees. People don't harvest the fruit anymore because it's so hard to get to. You know, our yeah. friend Peter Solaris there in, in he uh, calls them, uh, dinosaur trees. What's that? What Peter calls them dinosaur trees. Dinosaur trees. Right. You know, yeah. and so. You know, you've been you've been in Japan, uh, exposed to Japan agriculture for about forty years. You said forty years, yeah. And and what are they doing over there in their pruning practices to make sure that we, they don't create dinosaur trees? Uh, well, everything's kept kept low. You can um, find some of the pictures of uh, let's say a thirty by thirty foot area with a mango tree that's no more than five feet tall, with uh, maybe a thousand mangoes hanging on it. Uh -huh. And they get two crops a year because it's inside a greenhouse uh -huh. and that greenhouse, you can control the environment. That's getting back to the greenhouse for one second is that yeah. the Japanese government pays, the national government pays 50% of the greenhouse, the prefectural government pays 20% and the farmer just needs 30%. And 
what Ellison's finding out greenhouse growing works. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, you know, with not having to worry about birds and bugs, you know, once something's growing, we, we can create so many new markets for so many new fruit. Uh, Groomy Chama, for example, it's just, it's just kind of endless what can happen here. Right on. Well, that's great. And, you know, um, you know me, I, uh, I've always been a proponent of protected areas in that spirit. I mean, we have so much, so much exposure to wind and, and the sun here to where it really, you know, can damage uh, not only the soil, but the crop itself big time. And yeah, um, that's, that's really true. And that's, you know, the, the trellis, is a is a great system and it's a magical system but so is the japanese pruning practices of keeping things low and it's really just for uh to protect from typhoons right <laughs> for us it's to facilitate labor because labor is such a major issue we can't get people to work for 15 bucks an hour even if we could find somebody mm. so i mean you look at um I, I put it on htfgorg, a video in the blog section of me pruning a, a, my avocado tree. So say that I again. Need to put an right after, right? I'm so the only right? one you hear going to hear bitch about having to bend over to harvest avocados. Yeah. They, I mean, literally. And they, if you look at the trees, it's just uh, so a problem. Talk about, talk about the website again. Slow down so people can get the, the website. htfg.org. Great. Great. Hawaii and, tropical fruit uh, growing. And, and let's talk about avocados. You were talking earlier about imports. How much imports come in of avocados? How much could? Well, I mean, we the 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 the. I mean, I think it's essential we utilize the National Ag Statistics Service. Uh, the problem is a lot of their funding was cut by the state, by the powers that be, and the influence from the big importers. So they don't really get the money they need to do a full job like they did in two thousand and eight. So I tend to revert to 2008 numbers, which was something like we grow and sell a million pounds of avocados and we import 4 million pounds. Wow. And that's a pretty good average. Right. Uh, so citrus? There's, What's citrus? there's 4 million pounds of citrus, there are 4 million pounds of avocados that we need to replace with our, the things that we grow. According to one of the UH uh, uh, pamphlets, we waste about 7 million pounds here. Wow. So, and we still import 4 million. There's a, there's a real disconnect, right? Disconnect. We yeah. import 22 million pounds of citrus and grow, you know, a couple million. Four, we import 4 million pounds of lemons and, and only grow 40,000. Right, right. Well, see, the thing, what impresses me about the work that you've been doing over the years is like when you have your events, you know, folks from all over bring, for instance, you have your avocados and it's like all the different varieties of avocados that are, that are happening. And you've yep. done these beautiful charts that show all the different varieties. Can people still get those charts? Yeah, there. it's also on htfg.org. Yeah. We have a, this is a new rebuilt website and we have a store on the Wix platform and um, there's still a lot of bugs to work out, but uh, we still there's ways to join and not pay and there was ways to join and be full members and pay so everybody can sign up and get on the mailing list so we okay. will have an event on maui october 8th and tours on the 9th probably at where, um, where our repository is where okay uh, what, where is what? the repository uh you know like a, i <sighs> across uh, from the golf course in that land there oh, yeah, what, right. it's okay, got her right, name right. sorry sure Who, uh, who's got the place over there Can you see it that's it. um htfg.org yeah there you go yep yep i can see our local up there thanks <laughs> so ken so ken um the work that's being done when you when you, when you have people come to the conference and they bring the, that, that whole cornucopia of food. What does that do to your spirit, man? When you see, all Oh, that's that, just, all that's just right. amazing. I mean, when we have 200 some species of right. uh, fruit, Oh, thanks Reba. Yeah. Winsome. It's where Winsome's place is there. That's where we have our, our oh, repository. repository. Yeah. And right, right now we have the, uh, Bobby Paella's farm. That's where our convention is going to be. Yeah. 
So yeah. right now we have the trellis, Jordan's trellis next to the Japanese pruning system. Oh, good. So that eventually as it grows up in a couple of years, we'll be able to see the difference and even measure um, output and right. go good. from there. Yeah, it's, it's quite, a, it's quite a, a farm over there as far as, you know, all these different regenerative practices that's happening. There's a guy there with a yeah. tub grinder and, you know, they're, they're creating a lot of mulch and trying to cover the ground. And Yeah, um, I just remember the last really time I was there, I got seasick trying to walk across because the wind was so strong. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've never yeah. been seasick from, from not being on you water. Know, before. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're excited. To, the last time we had it on the Isthmus is when we had it at, on the Mahi Pono lot. And that was really well received. And, and it was a beautiful four days. And so we're hoping for the same thing, November 11th through the 14th. Um, Ken, so here it is. We're in Hawaii. We're importing so much. What's the idea that you have regarding our, uh, you know, not a tariff. We can't do a tariff. But we can. Okay. We can yeah. Well, we can't. Yeah, we can't tax interstate commerce. That's illegal. Right. Right. But we can do like California and these other places do and and have a um, inspection fee. So right now, I think the Department of Ag gets 0.4% of the state budget. Right. Plus 0 they, uh, 0 0 0.3. 0.3. All right, 0 0.3 plus they get container fees. So what's their budget is about 14 million a year. Uh, I should know that. I well, think it's more. It's more than that. Okay. Anyway, five using the USDA numbers from 2008. Thank you, Sean. Um, the the uh, uh, using those numbers at five cents a pound inspection fee. Right. That equaled 41 million, and okay. 41 million dollars would enable us to hire some inspectors to prevent some of these things like coffee rust and cokies and fire ants and shit like that. You know, right. Um, right. I, I think that uh, everybody wants to do all these things and there's no money and we have to get the money. And every time I write that, let's say on a, uh, to, to the newspaper or something, they, uh, you know, the trolls come on from strong arm produce in these different places. Oh my God, poor people are going to starve. Did they say anything when Matson and Young Brothers went up like 49%? Of right. course not. Right. Well, so, you know, the, the politics around agriculture here, I, I know all too well being on the board of agriculture. And, yep. and, yet, and yet, you know, we are in a position to be able to uh, raise all that awareness, especially with, the, with COVID um, creating what it did. So, you know, there's a, there, the, the time is ripe. Yeah. And uh, pun intended. To be yeah. able to, to really start, you know, shifting some of this stuff. I, you know, I want to encourage people though, like you said, you know, look at your neighbors, see what's growing there, and be able to get get food in the ground. But I want them to be able to do it in the way that they can they can know what the hell they're doing, right? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What is, what is the biggest problem with people having and planting fruit trees? Do they overfeed them? They well, I them? I mean, you know, we've had this discussion before too, and. So I, I tend to, uh, oh man, how to say this delicately, then? <laughs> so I don't, I don't put, it's not that I don't have faith in what the, the basis of KNF and regenerative agriculture, but a lot of people are killing the trees with kindness. You have a limited amount of root right. and you feed these roots, all of this great stuff. They can't handle it. It's why I'm so fat, you know, why we're obese. We, we're, we're faced with, uh, you know, all of this food that we can consume. And if we don't have self-control like me and most plants, we tend to eat too much. Well, you know and what, can, can so, so they're dying from one thing because they're being overfed with nutrition. Right. And, you know, humans, it's another story. So I got to, yeah, you know. You know the, in that spirit, though, like you said earlier, the food's denatured. So that's why people are having to eat more because they just don't feel that they've gotten any juice from it, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Not to butt oh, in, but no, you please. get like an ectomorph like me. I try to eat all day and all day and I just burn it up. You know, it's yeah. are, they're different fruit trees. They, they have different diets that they need. And, you know, 
exactly that each one you have to learn okay this one takes this amount of fertilizer for this long right. and then just leave it alone right as opposed yeah. to the other one likes more maybe right well it's not it's not it's more and it's what and part of the problem is people are looking at old documentation from uh in the 30s and you don't use coffee fertilizer you don't use triple 16 right. and expect to right. get fruit you know and they're right. still telling people oh, just throw triple 16 like you do on the coffee here no. Uh, yeah, no. absolutely. And Ken, what about watering these young trees? Uh, what, well, what's your I see, that's them? another thing I do that 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 UH says not to do. Um, you know, water at the tree line, water at the tree line. First three to five years, depending on the species, I water pretty much close to the base of the tree. And at the end of three to five years, I have eight to 15 times the root mass of a tree that was just watered at the tree line. And why is that? So then when I move that water out, and it becomes an overhead or foliar type system. Then I have eight to 15 times the roots looking for the trees. So I don't know if you remember when here, but the trees when you, when you were here a couple of years ago are, are four times larger than they were then because of, of the massive amount of root mass. So, so so you're getting that root mass because you're you're watering it close to the trunk? Closer to that. the trunk. Plus, I water every day, and they like the regularity. You like to eat every day, right? right, right Michael right. likes to eat every hour. So right. we, we, we've got a, uh, trees like to have that, that option. So yeah. they're only getting a taste, right? If I only got a taste and... You know, I got a little bunch of grapes here, and you gave me the grapes every hour. I'd be, I'd be really happy, especially with the Isabella locally grown grapes. But that's another. <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, so Ken, last time you were on, uh, when we got to uh, speak to you, you gave us a great A to Z on all the fruits. Do you have that up online that people can check that out? All the different fruits from A to Z. Um, it should, it yeah, there's, it should be on htfgorg and okay. somewhere in the in the on the thing well, otherwise cool. just you can email me or dave duchette or just through the web page and and we'll uh, find it for you right on so so ken here we are you know you have you have um so much being imported and there's so much potential for us to grow it all here what's holding us back um, I, I think, and don't get me wrong, I really like some of the people, ever since Abercrombie was in office, the, the Department of Ag changed radically, right. and all of a sudden started talking to farmers mm -hmm. and, and to real folks, and that made a big difference under Russell and obviously under Scott mm -hmm. later on, and so, but they need to be more proactive. They need to go into these grocery store chains and say, look, stop putting California oranges and avocados up front and Mexican avocados. Put right. those in the back, put our stuff up front. Start right. being proactive. So when, when um, I walked into Choice Mart, our local right. store the other day, and it, it, it's gotten, it used to be my, my case study for what should be done. And then they remodel and it's for shit, as I'm sure Maureen would attest to. And now I go in there and the first fucking thing I see, pardon me, guys, I'm obviously upset by it. Ecuador no, bananas and a great big sign, Ecuador. And I'm bugging my wife. Give me a magic marker. Give me a magic marker. <laughs> they don't buy this shit. And nobody had a pen. And I would have done it if anybody there had given me a pen, you know, my kingdom for a pen. <laughs> just so I could say that this was the wrong thing to have up front when you walk into it. And to right, the right, right over here in the corner was a pile of Hawaiian apple bananas. Right. I right. was, I was just so pissed. It's a good thing. I can't drive. Cause I would have been back there yelling at the store manager in the morning. Sounds like the local produce needs a manager. Yeah. He needs a better yeah, yeah, manager does. to, to, yeah. you know, fight for it. That's right. But it, it, but the state has to be proactive about marketing our stuff. Every other state in the union has a marketing extension agent. Every university has a marketing extension agent except UH. Nobody's fighting this except us. Okay. Well, you're giving me good fodder to go back to the board with. So that's cool. Yeah, I mean, this is, friend, these are things, the board, Ken. there's no reason, and, and Foodland will say, oh, we sell more local produce, 
than anybody else. Well, yeah, you've got 10 times the stores of everybody else. But the fact is, when I walked in there and it's and you got a sign up that says local first, always the best. And you got uh, oranges from Australia in there in November when our oranges are available. Right. That's that's offensive to me. I right. won't shop in these places. And we right. got to start thinking like that. So so where where would you feel is the best fruit producing area in Hawaii? Oh, the, the, every place has its own positive attributes. Right. I mean, everywhere. Right. I mean, there's no, there's no, um, you know, obviously mangoes. More southern and exposure. And Makaha, more southern. I think, I think, um, you know, Molokai has more arable farmland than any place but the Big Island, more than, than Oahu and Maui combined. Okay. And Molokai has incredible potential for the future. Right. Yeah. Um, I know I see all those 40 acre Hawaiian homeland lots, you know, and it's just, man. It's yeah. So, so here we have a, I mean, in 2019, I had 32 inches of rain. 2020, I had 111 inches of rain. And we're already way over the, the average for That's this year. Hearing, yeah, Kalakakua and Honal now is in, yeah. in, in so much water. Yeah, water. so I had zero mangoes last year. Mm. Now, because of wet, dry, wet, dry, I've got a second flowering and, and, and more mangoes coming. So I got mature mangoes maturing on one tree and little cakey on one tree and flowers. So it's just. Well, it's a consistency uh, issue. In, in yeah, Hawaii, right? well, that's. Yeah, that's that's one issue that will you know we can't unless you're in a greenhouse and controlling the right. thing. Um, that's an, that's another story. So unless you're Oracle, unless you're Alec, uh, Larry Ellison that has the money to put in that kind of infrastructure, what do we where do we get the where do we get the impetus for that? Well, it's it's you you have to fight for you know how long I finally got our certified kitchen in here for Hawaii Master Food Preservers. Well, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about food preserving because you do a lot of work around. Took, took me 20, 20 years to do that, Vince. Yeah. Well, we could, let's talk about that. But I just wanted to know, you know, we need the infrastructure. Our state budget is 0.3%. Um, you know, where my thoughts is that if we could communicate with the private sector in such a way that they feel like they want to go into their pockets confidently, I think it would probably take, you know, a policy change on a on a state level to be able to attract agri uh, agricultural investment. We got a lot of money here in Hawaii who could invest. Yeah. You know, yeah. we could put in the infrastructure for an agricultural system. See, that's the whole thing. You know, because as we talk about an agricultural system, you'll agree, right? It's broken. I mean, there's really not even a system. Well, there isn't. There isn't a system, and yeah. and that that's why I kind of this this whole uh, concept with sen Sensei Ag. I was kind of leery at first and, and not because, I mean, Ellison is six years older than me, but we both dropped out of the University of Chicago and he's, he's just a couple of years ahead of me. So uh, he did a little better than, than I did, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not complaining. So don't get me wrong, <laughs> but um, yeah, I own two properties instead of uh, <laughs> all of us, uh, yeah. but no, I think, uh, I, you know, I think, so yeah. the, the thing is that that we we have to. There, there's lots of little things and everybody has a, a, a little section or area of, of what they have to do, right. you know, yeah. in order to make things worse. I mean, if I couldn't market, if I couldn't utilize Maureen's operation the way I do, we couldn't get this stuff out there where people are clamoring for off the wall fruits. So when you talk about Maureen's operation, uh, let's, start, let's speak a little bit about that here. That's adaptations and there are a food hub there. So right. That's part of, that's part of a, a developing an agricultural well, system, right? Have that's that. our, well, have not so much the hub system. as it is for, for me as the, the, the wholesale aspect of that. Okay. You know, if I want to get something into Whole Foods, I'm not going to go through that. I may pre-sell something to chefs. We've got this new fruit. I've got all these at Cha Cha now, and you know, I send take some over to Adaptations. They will send it to a chef. The chef loves. I want 20 pounds, right? So I go pick it, you right. know, and bring it in like finger lines. We're right. we're working on. So a lot of. Um, a lot of things like that is just just building it's a slow concept to build the the market right. um, That's right. when when building local lemons we've taken local lemons from 
forty thousand in sales. To I, I, I'd have to ask. I don't even know if USDA has ever tracked how much there are now, but I'd venture to say more than a million pounds of local lemons are sold, and the imports are down to to you know, three point something million. Mm -hmm. um, instead of the 40,000 pounds. And it took me six months to get the, the grocery stores to put those rough bumpy skin Jambiri lemons or the little Kalpi lemons in it. But you know they sell out once they do. Right. So it's utilizing what we have, marketing the Rangpur lime, you know, the orange thing that looks like a tangerine and it's stringy. And yeah, I know you had one cause that's how your hair fell out, but it's, <laughs> it's uh, um, I mean, mine too. So, uh, <laughs> the uh, the Rangpur lime is is uh, you say, well, I've never heard of that. Well, you've never had Tangare Rangpur gin. Mm. Oh yeah, but well, that's what it is. I mean, we have such incredible fruit here that we haven't learned how to utilize. Right. So again, there's no marketing agent at UH. Yeah. There's a statistician, Stuart means well, but he's not a marketing guy. Okay. Well, that's a good, that's a good, uh, like we I need said, be good fodder. Give yeah. Good so fodder. from this $41 million of, uh, inspection fees, that's going to come into the state. You need to put half a million aside to develop a marketing department within the department. I mean, to, to build the marketing department with Sharon in agriculture, to have actually have extension agents that work for the state and not for the university. Right. Right, I hear you. And Ken, what about um, you know, all the invasives that are happening now? I mean, you know, coffee leaf rust is is a big deal. Uh, we well, just, this, this, obviously, this inspection fee would have helped some of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that attack. You know, fire ants, all yeah. these things that are brought in, um, and the next thing you know, it's just it's just decimating farmers ability to produce on a consistent I, I my lace wing is I just the USDA I was here from pea bark this morning we cut up a bunch of avocado samples of different varieties at lace wing and other bacteria a uh, couple different uh, jackfruit with fungal rot of different types mm -hmm. and uh, a bunch of uh, finger limes and other citrus with different types to, for them to test to see what's going on, you know, so that we can come up with stuff. I mean, other than, you know, the answer to everything for me is safer soap or, or neem oil. And then, you know, yeah. But then also, have you, have you worked at all? I know personally, I work with KNF amendments to spray, you know, and on the leaf, the leaves love it, you know, especially when you're dealing with the Oriental herbal nutrient that antifungal you get. It, yeah, you have I have I food. have some stuff here that we 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 have used, but I can't really do too much right now with the backpack sure. sprayer. No, I so, understand. Well, you got to um, get out of that backpack sprayer stuff. You got to get yourself a real sprayer. Okay? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I did, but I I gave it away to somebody who needed it more than me. So, well, you I, know, I, I just want to encourage people to spray. Um, you know, well, I, I need to put in a fertigation system and get that going. So, uh -huh. um, and one a great way to mitigate a lot of these disease processes is to get that. Uh, you know, uh, Paul Stamets was a great presentation at our convention on yeah. on all the all the the fungi that live on the leaf structure. You know, and, yeah. And so, you know, it's really important that we encourage people to spray. And the K the K and F amendments have been just amazing. But there's know, there's positive. Bacteria on those structures too. So, for instance, oh, yeah. with the uh, oh yeah, it's not the, it's not it's not getting rid of the beneficials. It's actually well, some does. Some some does. I I, I you know is from from my reading and understanding. But um, for instance, with 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 grapes, I mean, people worry about rose beetles. May I train my rose beetles? I'll collect them from the cacao and move them over to the grapes. Please eat these leaves. They taste much better. They're more healthy for you eat them go ahead and then they eat all the leaves on the grapes and the grapes think oh man i get to rest for a month and then it comes back i had four crops of grapes last year nice i mean that's in incredible in fact what we've done spawned a new uh, western sarah project that nancy redfeather and jerry herbert are doing uh -huh. for, for grapes in hawaii oh good so we're making significant headway in in, in that area so the, I'm, I'm hearing you you brought up cacao we had a uh 
a, a talk last the last time the speaker series was on cacao and uh, that horn beetle is really causing some havoc huh yeah the horn beetle i the the a, the queensland longhorn right yeah yeah i'm gonna stick one in peter next time i see it <laughs> <laughs> right that's right. Um, yeah, right so you know we got some mean nasty stuff here in agriculture yeah and, and i i know. think there's there's things that have to be all right, so, so in Kona, where you'll have a tree grow healthy for four or five years, and it's wonderful, and then it's dead in two months. Right. And so every time that's happened to me, we've dug down and investigated, and it's because it's hit pahoe hoi that okay. you, you don't see until you get down six feet. Okay. And, and there's a pocket of water on blue rock or something, and oh. the roots just are, oh, wow. that's it they die off so there's other circumstances that cause it's not like rapid ohia death or macadamia de rapid decline where the trees are gone like that but it's from a specific uh, fungus right. or bacteria but here it's just like i, I it happened with uh, this year already with uh, uh, one of my peanut butter fruit trees i mean i you know i go up i'm harvesting one week and the next week i go up to check it and it's dead like wow. what the hell happened right you know right. the leaves so I, are still green all over the ground and and so i'm down digging away around the base and checking for borer holes what might be a queensland longhorn beetle or other borers nothing there so i top the tree there's no no borer or no infestation in any of the wood so it's got to be that based on previous experience and and so kona top kona topsoil you're talking about is what six feet lava well yeah, yeah lava. that's 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 it you got our topsoil is six feet of lava so, um one of the reasons our our, our place does well is because we dug down three feet of rock dug it out and backfilled it with um really custom mixed soils from a place called organic matters here Mm -hmm. And Dino you know, will mix the soil the way you want with the amendments that you want in it. Nice. And so, you know, so triple Ken, let's stuff. talk about that a little bit. What what is the what is what are mainly the 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 what the elements that fruit trees concentrate? You know. Well, I mean, I I I will have um, a mix of of uh, cinder, compost, mulch, topsoil, uh, triple six organic, uh, maybe pearl and perlite and that's that's about it you know sometimes what do you, what do you use for calcium something it's in the um uh amendments from the triple six or triple eight oh, okay. cal okay. calcium but are you, are you, you five you years i may throw supplemental calcium and we use a zero zero fifty on on mango citrus and garcinias to trigger uh flowering okay and sweet and citrus right okay so it's and amazing it, i i one year just as a playing around i gave a lemon tree usually i just give it a little bit a handful maybe four times a year of zero zero fifty uh -huh. so i gave this one every month i gave this one lemon tree this lemon was so sweet it was unbelievable so it was people, it was nasty it was so sweet tell people you know, what zero zero fifty is yeah uh it was just uh I mean the no, potassium tell, tell, yeah tell folks yeah. you know why why there's uh, such a high number of potassium um, that's a good question it just works i i first learned about it on molokai you know and after all these years in japan if you said there was a better watermelon than japan i would have said oh you were nuts but i went to molokai we were teaching master food preserve and marshall joy who's now an extension agent there brought me one of his watermelons and I said, oh, my God, I never had a melon that good in my life. Hmm. And so every day he brought me one. And that's what I ate for that day was a watermelon. Mm -hmm. and, and it was and that was it. I mean, it was it just and he was it, using that high potassium. Yes. And that's to, to it helped to mitigate some of the chemicals left over in the soils. There's some soils on Molokai you still cannot grow root crops in okay. because of the the cane and pineapple chemicals that were used right right. but right. the melons were okay and the 0050 just sweetened this thing so much then it was just unbelievable 
it's interesting when we had the Mahi Pono, uh, when we had our convention on Mahi Pono land, I went back there because we had laid mulch down over the two acres. And I went back there uh, after about a year and there was melons growing on the, you know, so people were spitting out melon seeds during the convention and they came back and grew some really nice, really nice basketball sized uh, melons, you know. Well, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. it's really good, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the master food preserver. You know, I know you've done a lot of work as a chef and bringing that forward. You know, we, we, we have the fortune of you being a chef along the way and, and the knowledge that you have with uh, tropical fruits and such. And, and how you've been able to bridge all that. Um, well, let's talk about preserving food some. Yeah, so uh, this star, we're just doing a, a brochure now. We, we uh, uh, I when first learned about this program was in 2012 from Chef Ernie Miller in LA. And I was helping him out at his place was the farmer's kitchen was a restaurant at the corner in the middle of the Hollywood farmer's market. And so I was prepping for him every weekend and helping, helping out. And um, I said, you got to go to this program and, and bring it back to Hawaii. And I said, cause his, his wife is from, from here. Uh -huh. And I, Oh, that sounds pretty good. So I wound up get trained out there, brought the program back to Hawaii. Uh, every state in the union, it was a function of extension. Mm -hmm. UH had zero interest unless I wrote him a million dollar grant. If I'm going to write a million dollar grant, I'm going to write it for the fruit growers. And I didn't get a million, but I got a lot. We started the program. And until last year, the Hawaii Master Food Preservers was a function of the Hawaii Tropical Fruit Growers instead of University Extension. I see. Um, and we last year, we formed our own 501c3, so I don't have to write grants that compete against each other for the same money. Right. And, uh, We've been doing really good. We've had three classes already this year in, in Kona. We've had, as you know, a number of classes at Maui College, you know, with Chris Spear um, and Dean Louie and some of the guys there. Uh, it's, it's an amazing program. It's eight full days. It's pretty intensive, you know, jam and jelly, acidified products, high pressure canning, fermentation, pickling freezing and dehydration advanced dehydration which cool. is pretty incredible too yeah, right. so um there's um um yeah we're we're always looking for more funding we did receive a grant to do seven videos now the seven videos wouldn't be for certification but they will teach people the basics of how to do all of these procedures Perfect. so Perfect. that if you're making something at home it's safe if you want to be, you know, at, at, at farmer's markets on the mainland, I even saw it in Illinois when I was visiting my daughter. Um, they had, oh, uh, Illinois Master Food Preservers high, uh, signs hanging in the booth. And in California, it's pretty common to have certified master food preserver from the University of California uh, hanging in its booth. Nice. And until we it really did it, I mean, the first couple of classes I did here we, I actually were certified through University of California, even though it was Hawaii, because we couldn't get UH to do anything uh, yeah, without well, uh, giving them money and, you know, 30% right off the top, they're going right. to blow. So I think it's even more. It's like 40. Well, yeah, this was, this was yeah. 08 or something or anywhere 12. So there's a question I missed here that somebody asked about um, acai, growing acai yeah. in Hawaii. Um, uh, let me see, um, not to buy, this person say not to buy acai bowls because acai doesn't grow on Maui, but a few people have told me that acai can grow here. Do you know the truth? Oh, yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, it grows all over Kona. Uh, Maureen, in fact, the last bunch I got, I got Maureen gave me a bunch. So, I, I mean, and I don't, I'm not sure where she got them, but I I see them in Keho and by the ocean and up to about 1,200 feet right. uh, all over the place. And someone was asking about... Them. There, was a, there was a video on our Facebook page, uh, How to Process a Sai, and that was on uh, Oahu and uh, Bob Osgood's, Robert Osgood's kid, used to be with Park. Right. Yeah. Cool. So cool. he was he was processing a sigh from their place on Oahu. So, oh, good. I mean, yeah, if it'll grow at these locations on other islands, it has to grow on Maui. Yes. 
And then um, someone was just asking about uh, information on citrus, growing citrus, so they don't have to, you know, reinvent the wheel. Um, basic knowledge about is it is it available on your website regarding you know putting citrus trees in? I know Mahi Pono is planting like a million citrus trees. Yeah, so, yeah, a lot of a lot of citrus going in there. But um, are, are they still viable entity? You know. Um, Some question I, I keep hearing yeah, about. Yeah, you know, uh, Mahi Pono, uh, from what I understand, uh, their operations around the world, they have to spend like $5 billion a year on their agricultural lands on their operations. So Maui gets a chunk of that. And they've invested $100 million so far in their operation and putting a lot of trees in the ground. And, uh, you know, if, if I had the $262 million to buy the isthmus and then, you know, $100 million <laughs> on top of that to to put into an agricultural system. I may have done it a little differently. Uh, We'd have but, a big uh, party. <laughs> so, know, I mean, planting you know, party. Everybody's got to work first. Yeah, right. But, you know, just I, I'd like to see these winds slowed down with, uh, you know, some where the wind corridors come into the island and yeah. put, in, you know, um, put in some windbreak uh, material in a sense to, to just change the microclimates. But with that said, you know, they're they're proactively doing agriculture and I applaud their efforts. And yeah, no, I, I would I would agree with that. And I think that judging by the 22 million pounds of citrus we imported, I think in 2008 was the last number. Um, I think that's got a great potential for uh, market for import substitution. Right. And it was the last thing Senator Inouye said to me was to get, you know, do import substitution and get money back into the hands of the farmers. Yeah. Well, that's and, the whole thing the, you know, the, 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 and, and the, the multiplier effect it creates in the local community is the, is the key. Uh, yeah. Keeping that money here, you know? And uh, so we just need to get more and more back to, to what that represents. And, you know, you and I, we've been at it for a while and, and, and yeah. beating, beating these drums. And so I think it's important that, the stronger our organizations get in membership, the the louder the volume of our voices. And yeah, so I think you finally overtook us though with members. We were Vince and I when we were all starting out, we had a little competition, but we we're up to <laughs> eighteen hundred. No. I think you got over two thousand now, right? Never, never, never com com competition. We always love. Well, no, but it was great so. because it meant we we were you know it's just different focus, but it's the same goal. That's and right. that's healthy, successful healthy, farming healthy competition right? healthy competition and so yeah. and a lot of those people are members of both groups yeah so like me like you so that's right um, yeah i, I highly I recommend i highly recommend everybody get out you know get to your website and and to be able to tap into um uh, what hawaii tropical fruit growers provides you you brought forward so much knowledge and information and and, and pe you know for people to get access to so I just want to encourage people to get to your website along with our website and that, you know, to show that we are proactive organizations that really are looking to get the, the information into people's hands and, and have people start to change things around here uh, regarding local agriculture, you know? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, all we can do is keep uh, focused on, on what we believe is the right direction Right. And right. and try to get others focused on I don't if you don't like my way, go see Vince. He's got a different way that might be better for where you're focused. But at least they're they're moving forward. We're moving uh, in unison, in a sense, right. and, and with with different ways to get to the same uh, ends and. I mean, I wish I could do with sprouts like you do because I eat a lot of them. I can't even <laughs> find yours here, you know? I mean, you know, it's interesting, Jerry Brunetti, and I, I like to bring Jerry's name into here because, you know, he's a brother of a different mother and and used to uh, present a number of years, seven years at our body and soil conferences. He said something that just profoundly, profoundly affected me. And he said, you know, nature just wants to collaborate and cooperate with us. And yeah. you know, Ray Archuleta speaks about the natural architecture uh, of, that we need to emulate in nature. And, and so, you know, if we have a, if we have as people like you and I do, if we collaborate and cooperate with one another, 
we can really take this to another level agriculturally here in the state. And yeah. I just really that, appreciate all the work. Nature, um, way, nature yeah. joins us. Yeah. You no, know, it, it right. joins in. So I, I never have a problem with nature. I just do what she tells me to do, basically. That's right. That's right. You know, and that, that comes from uh, comes from within. Yeah, and I do well, go and talk to my plants, trees sometimes. Well, and you're, you're, you're able to see what you're looking at. See, a lot of people can't, aren't able to do that. You know, they're, they're not able to see what they're looking at. And, and, and you bring that forward in a way that it really helps people. Well, in a, in a way, it's, it's third eye because you, you, you have to envision that tree out there in 10 years. You have to have, and that's, that's really, we have to focus on the industry, not just our own operations, not just right. my farm. What's going to happen with these citrus in, in 10 years? You know, what's going to happen when these five avocado trees each have 300 pounds on them? What am I going to do with all this stuff? Right. Well, right. if you give it away, you're taking it away from real farmers trying to make a living. You can't just give away stuff. Yeah, there's some food banks and people who need it is one thing. Um, uh, my son and another friend caught a guy uh, stealing stuff out of the farm on last Friday. Wow. You know, and yeah, it, the police took him because he also stole a bunch of stuff from out of a Loja gas station that was in his backpack. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's a, the, the theft issues, all of yeah. these issues are things that, that we have to deal with on, on, on different levels. And, and you know, it's funny too, Ken, as you know, when people that don't farm for a living come onto farms, they go, oh, you got plenty, you know, yeah. how about giving me some? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know? we, find, and, uh, <laughs> we find here that, you know, a, a good number of the people, they're blinded by the coffee industry. They come in, oh, I got to be a Kona coffee farmer. They got their, their name on the label, the, the right. second year, you know, and they go out, pick a little bit, and then they hire all the coffee pickers and and they're gone in five years they realize hey this is work man to be All a right. farmer and a coffee yeah. farmer which is the most labor intensive thing in the world so yeah well, what, ken ken this has been a real fortuitous talk i really appreciate having the opportunity to not only get the chalk talk with you like this but they'll also share it with the community that's on tonight and that community that will hear it later on give me some closing thoughts before we get back to playing some music here to close out the evening um, it just, you got to just, about? just, it's the same thing. You want a grant, it's got to be for the industry and you write it from the heart. Don't write it for money. Right. Um, what you do in your, for your farm, it's got to be from, from, from the heart. You've got to be able to feel it. Um, you can push the envelope sometimes, but if you push it too far, nature's going to push back. So, right. you know, Kiwi's not going to work, but Asahi will, <laughs> you know, you can, and apples don't really work commercially. You have, you have choices. I mean, do you want it for you to eat or do you want it for you to sell or do you want it to you to produce value added products? And the master food preservers is all about producing products. So we grow things for different reasons. Right. So um, Katie, I want to get Katie to, to share something before Mike goes back on, but can, um, Thank you so much, brother, for being on tonight and, uh, you know, wishing you well oh, on your, pleasure, your, man. your shoulder so you can start picking fruit again. And uh, yeah, really, you take good I care can't, man, this is hard. I'm doing things lefty. I never thought possible. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. you don't want the details. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken, again, thank you and all the best to your wife and your family and and oh, thanks. Let's let's go oh, right. and uh, we'll see so, that. You know, hopefully, you'll said see hi. Oh, hi. She's yeah. back there walking around. Right on, right on. Hopefully, we'll see you at our convention, November uh, 11th through the 14th, that you can present there. I know folks will love to hear hear you present. And uh, yeah, that would be that would be great because I know that last one didn't work out. I forgot what happened to me or something, but yeah, something was going on. I know. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's usually mechanical and stuff like that. With right at the last patient. moment, right at the last moment, you had some going on with physically, but yeah, yeah. So you take care of yourself. Put yourself in a bubble up until November, okay? <laughs> yeah, right. I'll I'll be there July twenty sixth, so I'll talk to you then. Okay, sounds good. All right, Ken. All the best, brother. Take good care.
Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to Micah, so I ain't going. Yeah, there. good. And what's your website again? HTFG.org. Okay, great. Thank you. Katie, Thanks. get it, dear. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ken. That was incredible. Um, and if everyone can just give me two minutes, we will get to Micah's amazing music. I promise. Okay. All right. Uh, so if you joined us a little late tonight, don't worry, this will be on YouTube tomorrow on our website as well. Um, so all of that incredible chat and Micah's music will be online tomorrow. I know a lot of you here are members already and some of you attend these speaker series quite often. Thank you so much to all of you for your eternal support. We're so grateful. If you're not a member, I do hope you consider joining. We've got two mini conventions coming up, which will be online, uh, and then our annual statewide convention in November. Uh, and that includes a bounty of resources and incredible network networking opportunities. So if there's ever a reason to join HFUU, uh, there's so many reasons, but the convention is definitely a good one. So there's 13 chapters here. There's definitely a chapter near you. And in-person meetings are starting soon, as I said, which is really exciting. Here in HANA, we're gonna have our first in-person meeting in a long time, uh, in a couple weeks. So I'm super stoked for that. Tonight, I wanted to announce that we are recipients of the USDA NIFA Western Region Farm Stress Mental Health Grant. Super exciting stuff. Uh, we will be bringing a number of online and in-person programs around community building at our mini conventions and at our annual event in Maui in November. I also wanted to emphasize some of the mental health resources that are available for free for farmers, for all agricultural workers, for anyone um, through HFU, through USDA, through WRASAP and countless other organizations. As head of communications for HFUU, I really want to try to make more of an effort to include these resources in our weekly emails, um, because besides the sense of community and support that you get from being a member with HFUU, there are incredible professional resources that are available to help you all nav navigate the incredible but tough and stressful work that you all are doing. So please email me. Uh, my email is hfuu at hfuu.org. It's at the bottom there. You can also reply to any email you get from the Farmers Union. That will that reply will go to me. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, thoughts, anything, um, or if you come across any mental health resources that you would like to, to share with others, I really appreciate it. All right, so off to you, Micah, to close off the evening. Thank you so, so much, Ken, Vince, Micah, everyone for joining. This is this is a really great night. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Katie. I want to say thanks to Vince and uh, Ken um, for letting me just be a fly on the wall for that whole thing. That was that great. Was, uh, Loved your input. Very insightful. <laughs> Good. Good nah. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to get you farming here yet some more. Well, I, I, I'm more of a... Uh, gardener at this point. Oh, fine. I got a ton of weeds to pull, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess I'm like a DIY sort of ghetto farmer. I've yeah. got a little plot in LA and a plot up north growing hemp mm -hmm. and tomatoes and um, making hempcrete out of my hemp, though. It's just been... That's the, this is my hemp hat, so... There you go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, I, I Good love old seeing Canadian the, uh, hemp. I just roll them up and guys, smoke uh, when it wears out. What's that? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so when it wears out, you just uh, tilly Canadian hemp hats. You yeah, just when they wear out, you just roll them up and smoke them. So it's like, <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, it's so late for me. This high. I'm a farmer. This is past my bedtime. <laughs> I just I just want to say I love how you guys have uh, the uh, the common denominator vision of seeing the the future with what you're doing and coming from the heart, even if you have different methods you know different means the end goal is yep. uh, is pretty cool very righteous and i i have a lot of respect for you both mahalo yeah and he's here he's here in my house mahale salute article kid i
came out of a bowl It landed on the ground It grew a little mushroom And then a hairy ape man He put it in his mouth He started having thoughts All kinds of ideas Grew himself a little ego Invented a new language but then he built a tower Designed a system of power You know I read it in the paper He made a tiny computer That fits inside your hand Communicate across the planet Look back into the cosmos Post a picture for your Facebook Make a profile on your Snapchat Murder people from a distance And laugh at videos of cats Everything, 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 everything is bullshit It's bullshit Sure, Michael, let's do it, brother. All right, we'll do a grand finale here. This is a, uh, a throwback, huh? It's a Mahi Ai, Mahi yeah. Ai Festival. Bringing it back home. 2019. Bringing it back home. Yeah, baby. Here we go. We'll do some Nemo for you with, uh, with Vince on the harp.
again, baby. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was amazing. Oh, so, I so much. My dulcimer my this guy. Get prepared, Mike. Uh, so one of these days, I'm going to join you with my dulcimer. Oh, good. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Cool. That'd be fun. And Let's I'm going to be it. I'm going to be on the big this weekend, Ken. I'm oh, yeah? Phone. Yeah, my brother's over there. So I got some business to do over there and meet with uh, some folks for the convention. So maybe we'll get well, you got you got time. Just, uh, you know, I'm right in between Maureen and Chantel. So there you go. You see my, my if you're here Saturday, you can see my wife's red tent on the road at the farm stand. So oh, good. Perfect. Good. Well, hope to check you out. Hey, Maureen, make sure he comes by. <laughs> right on. And uh, I want to give, one more, you I give one more tune to Micah. I want Micah to play one oh, more yeah. tune. You got one more in you? Sure. What, what okay. Let's. What I'm going to do. Well, you know, anything you like, brother. Okay. Anything you like. It's up to you. You know, back in uh, 2019, folks, uh, those that weren't able to be here, um, Micah, Micah's dad, Willie Nelson, and his mom supported our. Uh, having a Mahi Ai music festival here on Maui. And uh, it was so wonderful of them, so gracious of them in, in supporting HFUU. And then Micah last year for our convention curated a wonderful three hour concert. And so this year he's gonna to be touring during our convention, but he'll be here in spirit. And uh, he's been a very big supporter of HFUU. So really um, I do appreciate the fact that he gives so much of his heart to this organization and here tonight to share his music. He's, this is like the third speaker series you've done, yeah? Who's counting? <laughs> but it's been great, you know, and he's always he's always just so uh, uh, wanting to come forward and share his, 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 his music with us. So thank you, Micah. Appreciate you, brother. So please take us out with whatever you like to play.
find yourself and give it all away. That's my favorite too, and you played that, so that's so sweet. Man. I got your team mail, I guess. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, on Bandcamp, folks, go to Bandcamp under Particle Kid, and I'm so fortunate that the, you know that this music is available to us, and I I I love it. And and one day I was out painting outside and had my headphones on. I kept playing this over and over and over again. This one tune, I just love this tune. And um, talk, can you tell us real quick about your, your new uh, uh, album you're coming out with? I can't announce it yet. Okay, not uh, yet. Okay, yeah. well. It's a secret. Okay, well, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. <laughs> but anyhow, look out for it, folks. It's going to be a great, go. great project. And uh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Vincent. Brother, love you, man. Thank love you, you too, man. man. And everybody, thanks so much for being here tonight. And we love, uh, we love all you folks and appreciate all you being on. Ken, again, thank you. And uh, Katie, uh, Vincent Kimura, aloha to the HFUU team. And uh, stay tuned, everybody. More coming. Aloha. Aloha. Thanks, Micah. It's great to, uh, hey, if you ever see Red. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell him Ken Love says hey. And yep, yep. He won't remember, but. I'll tell you the picture. There's the three of us with the skeleton. So he'll, he'll, <laughs> that's weird. I'll have to find it and send it to Vince to give. I to know you. exactly what you're talking about. That skeleton. Yeah. Yeah. It's like his mascot <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. hey, well, I'll, uh, maybe I'll see you over on, on the big island. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, or over there, if I get bug Vince in November. <laughs> yeah. there you go. All right. That's right.